All right, so today we're just going to talk about absolute value functions. So what an absolute value function looks like is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And what the absolute value is, is just how far, um, how far that value is away from zero. So like the absolute value of negative three would be three units away from zero. So its, it's absolute value would be three, right? We'll just do it over here. Like negative three, for example, would equal three. Uh, absolute value of negative three would equal three. So if we had the absolute value of negative x, that would equal x. And likewise, say we had absolute value of three, that would also just equal three, or absolute value of x, you know, would just equal x. So that, you just kind of get a little idea of what's going on here. So now with that said, uh, let's look at these x values here. So if we want to go over to our function, um, if we want to graph this, the absolute value of x, we just said over here, if it's if it's positive x, the absolute value of x, it will be x. So just make a little curly bracket, and we can say that the absolute value of x is equal to x um, if x is oops, x is greater than or equal to zero, right? If x is positive or zero for that matter. Now, uh, the absolute value of x is actually going to equal negative x if um, if x is smaller than zero. So what we're, what we're basically looking at here is two graphs um, that are just added together. So we would have basically y is equal to x um, with the domain, uh, let's, let's write its domain over here, uh, is x is greater than or equal to zero. So that's one graph. And then this would be our other graph here, which would be y is equal to negative x. And its domain is x is smaller than zero. And so these two graphs combined, uh, we would get y is equal to the absolute value of x with the domain. Its domain here would be all the real numbers. So let's graph it. Let's see what we get. Um, let's just start picking numbers. If we pick 0 for the absolute value of 0, we'll just be 0 because x, the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So we have this point. Um, absolute value of 1 is just 1. It's positive 1. Absolute value of 2 is just 2. And so forth. Absolute value of 3 is 3, 4, 5. 6 and it goes up like this and this is exactly what you're seeing where x is greater than or equal to 0 we're getting the we're getting the line or the graph of the line y is equal to x right and then so if we go the other way we start picking negative values the absolute value of negative 1 is equal to here let's just do this down here um, so if we want the absolute value of negative 1 this is going to be equal to add the negative of that that value negative one. So the absolute value of negative one is positive one. And so there we go. Now if we do the same thing, if we say picked the absolute value of negative two, we would take the negative of negative two and it would give us positive two. Same thing for negative three and negative four, and it just keeps going up this way. So we can just draw this. We're going to get this line and this line. Well, I guess it's more like that line. So really what you're looking at is you can look at it as two different lines or two different graphs. Like this one would be y is equal to negative x, negative x. And this one over here would be y is equal to x. But together, this whole thing is uh, this, this whole thing is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x, and its domain is all of the real numbers, and its range you can see here is uh, is all of the positive numbers including zero. So you'd say it's y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. 
And let's do one more example, just, uh, just add in a little bit more here. Uh, so we'll say we want to graph the, the function y is equal to the absolute value of x uh, minus 3. So just throw in an extra number here just to confuse you a little bit. But uh, So what we can do is we can look at this exactly the same way. Um, we can treat this as two different graphs. Um, so we would have the graph of y is equal to x minus 3, right? and the graph of y is equal to negative x minus 3, negative x minus 3. Make sure you put the brackets in there because it's the negative of everything that's inside the absolute value. Where this, uh, where this line up here would have the domain, let's do little curly brackets, the domain of x, uh, where x is actually greater than or equal to 3. Like that. And this one would have the domain down here where x is smaller than 3. Okay, so let's just uh, let's graph these and you'll see that when we combine them together, we'll get the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. So if we substitute in uh, a 3 for our x value here, because x can be equal to 3, 3 minus 3 will be 0. So at 3, x is equal to 3, our y value is equal to 0. If we substitute in a 4, because we can have bigger values than 3, so 4 minus 3, it will be equal to 1. If we substitute in a 5, 5 minus 3 is 2. Um, we substitute 6, 6 minus 3 is 3, and I think you start getting the point where it's just going to go up in, in this direction. Now if we pick numbers that are smaller than 3, if we picked uh, negative 2, or sorry, if we picked 2, uh, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, but we take the negative out here, so you can see that, the negative of negative 1 is just positive 1. Uh, if we picked 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And we'll do one more. Uh, if we picked 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and take the negative of that, we get positive 3. And you start seeing the same pattern, we're just going up in this direction. So we'll just draw a little graph here. We get that line, and we get this line. And so we can kind of look at it again the same way that this line over here would be y is equal to the negative of x minus 3, uh, minus 3, not 31. <laughs> and this line here, y is equal to simply x minus 3. And when you add these two together, this whole green thing, this whole green function is equal to, the fun this green function is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. I guess something I just want to clarify is uh, um, for the absolute value functions, if say like for the black one you have f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Um, if you look at it here, like this part of the equation is just equal to the, the function of f of x is equal to x, right? And so if we were to have that entire function, you know, spanning the whole, the whole domain, it would look like this, right? And all we've done is we kept this part the same, but for all the negative values, we just reflected it over the x-axis. And same thing over here. Um, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. Well, the graph of x minus 3 uh, is its rise, or its slope is 1, and its x in, or its y-intercept is negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, and our slope of 1. And you see that this part of the equation that's uh, that's greater than zero is preserved. And we go down here like that. And all we've done here is the same thing. We've just reflected all of these negative values over the x-axis. And that's how we do absolute value functions. And so say you had some other, you know, you'd have some crazy function here, like, let's do it in a different color. You know, you could have, like, that function, even though it's, I guess that's not really a function, but um, so if you wanted to take the absolute value of this, what we would do is we would just reflect the parts that are below the x-axis uh, over the y, or over the x-axis again. So we would get something like this, and 
you know, something like that, right? And then uh, it would kind of go off like that. And then the absolute value of this purple function would now be like this, including these blue regions and excluding those purple regions underneath the x-axis.